we now live in a world of transactions, a world of speed, a world where you will get left behind if you do not keep up. It's not just the internet itself or computers or iPads or smartphones that are the most important force with respect to decentralization in the world today. I think it really is just the cellular telephone itself. Now everybody's on the internet, but twice everybody is on cell phones. And the beauty of what cell phone, phones have done is it has eliminated the need for wires to take communications throughout the world. And so you now have people living in places in the world where they never would have gotten telephone communication if they waited for the cables and the wires to show up. But the cell towers have now allowed them to connect themselves, allowed farmers in the most distant part of India or somewhere else to understand what the market conditions are in Mumbai. And so it is that kind of disruptive technology, that kind of innovation that truly is reshaping the world. We heard about Twitter. I talked to one of my grandchildren, a 17-year-old one day, and said to him, Brian, I don't know what's wrong. You don't email me anymore. You don't answer my phone calls anymore. Did I do something wrong? Oh, Poppy, no. We don't do phone calls anymore. <laughs> and, and we really don't do emails anymore. <laughs> what do we do, Brian? Poppy, we tweet. Ooh. <laughs> what's a tweet? Uh, it comes from Twitter. Why don't they call it a twit? I'm so confused, I don't understand any of this. And he says, we're gonna get you a Twitter account. I don't want a Twitter account. <laughs> well, you have to have one if you wanna to talk to your grandchildren. You gotta have a Twitter account. And we're gonna push you on Facebook. Mm -mm. No, no. I'm gonna be 75 years old. I do not need a social network site, thank you. But then three days later, he says to me, uh, you have a Facebook page. I said, how did I get a Facebook page? Somebody pretended they were you and they put you up on Facebook. Your picture's there, your bio, everything's up there. I said, I don't believe it. You cannot invade my privacy like that. I'm an American citizen, I have rights. They can't do that. Get the lawyers, we're gonna sue this kid Zuckerberg. He's got a lot of money. <laughs> and we're gonna sue Zuckerberg. And then my grandson says, but Poppy, you already have 30,000 friends. Oh, go over there, you know, keep up with these kids. But what a fascinating world to be living in. What a fascinating opportunity to be here in this place today talking in this global forum about innovation and where it takes us all. I started down this road, George Washington University. And so when people talk about the world we're living in and I get asked about it, I make the simple point that yes, we have problems. Yes, there are dangers. But don't forget where we have come from accept the reality that more people are living under democracy than ever before in history. More nations are living under democracy than ever before. Fewer wars than ever before, even though it may not look that way. It is a different world. But you say, but General, we don't see that on television. We see Afghanistan, we see Iraq, we see the other trouble that we see in North Korea. My goodness, what about that? And my answer is yes, count them all up. North Korea, Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan, add them all up. And what does it come to? Roughly 700 million people. How many people are in the world? Seven billion. What are the rest of them doing? They're moving to a different dynamic. The dynamic that is the essential dynamic and will make the world a better place through innovation, change, and all the things you've been talking about and will be talking about. And the most important part of that is economic growth and wealth creation. Wealth creation, not just to make people wealthy at the top, but wealth creation that brings all people up. Wealth creation that creates jobs. What's the single most important thing needed in the Arab Spring world or anywhere else? Jobs. And you can only have jobs if you have an economy that's functioning. You can only have an economy that's functioning if it's an economy that is stripped of corruption. It's an economy where people are paying attention to what's going on, facing the reality of the economic world they're living in. And so I think this forum has been a very, very important one. Lots of challenges out there, but the majority of the world is moving forward and we can always do better. And I'm sure that's the image you want to carry away from this global forum. Thank you very much.